Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White and joined by my co-host Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest, and that's going to be Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio.com. Thanks for joining us, Andy. Well, it's great to be here. Awesome. Uh, so we've got Lyft earnings coming up after the close here today, ride sharing picking up. Uh, my wallet's getting thinner as I order Ubers and Lyfts across the board as they continue to look for drivers and they're spending millions of dollars. But what's your data showing as far as uh, ride sharing uh, starting to improve a little bit as the economy opens back up or through the Delta variant for the most part? Uh, are you seeing some positive uh, data here out of Lyft? Yeah, I think, you know, there is a little bit of a um, resurgence in the number of people, uh, you know, talking about getting these uh, rides. But what's really crazy about it is, you know, we're kind of back to square one if you're Uber or Lyft because we're starting to see uh, a new competitor emerge for these guys, and it's called the taxi, um, something <laughs> that they had to deal with at the very beginning. And now the taxi is back. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Um, you know, there's really a, a few reasons why you would take uh, an Uber or a Lyft rather than a taxi. You, you know, it, it was cost, uh, it used to be cheaper to take those, availability, they used to be available right away, and they're really easy to use. So they still have easy to use, but taxis are starting to catch up in that regard. And really it's on cost and availability that we're starting to see some serious cracks in the armor of Uber and Lyft. Um, you know, the number of people talking about uh, how much these services cost is up 71% year over year. A lot of complaints about cost. And the number of people talking about them simply not being available is up 31% year over year, which uh, again, just goes to show you that uh, these companies are really, um, they're really struggling because of the lack of of enthusiasm for people wanting to to drive people around. I think, um, you know, the taxi's kind of back. We're seeing that um, that really outpace Uber and Lyft in terms of year over year uh, mentioned volumes, the number of people talking about uh, scheduling its taxi. So, um, you know, they're kind of back to square one from a competitive standpoint. Uh, they're back where they started. They're recruiting drivers and they're trying to beat taxis. And who'd have thought that we'd be here in 2021, but uh, <laughs> COVID's, COVID's really turned things upside down and, and reverted a lot of uh, adoption to where it was before. All right, Andy, let's have some fun with this. So <laughs> let's put out a scenario where Kevin Hinks is the president, and I just appointed Andy Swan as transportation czar, okay? And I said, Andy, fix Uber and Lyft. How would you do that? Well, the first thing I would do is, I, you know, what you got to do is you got to get ready. First thing you do is quit. <laughs> first thing you do is quit. I would take paternity leave for 12 weeks and move on. No. Uh, <laughs> so, but oh, you know, what, that was good. What's, what's really crazy about this is there, there, there's not really a great way to fix Uber and Lyft because they're so reliant right. on drivers. And the drivers don't want to drive people around anymore. They're making more money driving a, you know, a milkshake or something from Walgreens. Uh, the same trip is paying them the same amount of money, uh, but they don't have to deal with the person. They don't have to deal with an obnoxious, right. smelly person. The same reasons we didn't want to get into cabs at the beginning. And so uh, the game has totally changed on these uh, the only thing that fixes Uber and Lyft and what the light at the end of the tunnel really is, is eliminating the need for a human driver. Uh, I think we're further away from that than some people think, but that's what gets the cost down to be absolutely uh, you know, dominant. And I think that's the big bet uh, that people have to be willing to make is that these companies will be able to sustain, sustain themselves until the driver is no longer necessary. Yeah, and Andy, if you look at, uh, you know, the popularity, popularity of taxis and the mentions up year over year substantially, I get that part of it because it's coming from a really low base. I mean, here in Chicago, yeah. they basically just eliminated most of the taxis. I, did, I didn't see one for months uh, in 2020 uh, when the pandemic hit. But if you look at that data and you said, you know, they're relying on drivers, but 
Are you seeing negative uh, undertones to all that? Because Uber doesn't make any money on their delivery business or their freight business at this point. So they're still making money on this. They're still spending a lot of money. But are you seeing data that points to ridership picking up and now drivers are starting to follow where they're actually going to be able to lower the cost of those? Because that's becoming prohibitive, I think, for a lot of users of these ride sharing apps. Yeah, it's a big problem across the board. It's not just <clears throat> it's not just demand for drivers because we see in our data a lot of a lot of people are complaining that when they want a ride, none is available. Um, and so you see this actually across a lot of industries. You know, you you hear complaints from business owners across sectors. People don't want to work. I can't get anybody to work, and that's kind of what Uber and Lyft are saying. Um, you know, right now in terms of the data that we see. They just really aren't getting that many people uh, on the road to pick to pick up uh, riders. And it's a big problem. Um, you know, if, if it's affecting the local Wendy's or Chipotle enough that they have to shut down operations for a while, then you can bet it's affecting Uber and Lyft that they people don't want people in their car, you know, in an enclosed environment. They don't want to go pick people up. They would much rather deliver them uh, a meal from Shake Shack and move on. And I think that's the biggest the biggest point of uh, competition right now is actually outside of their own industry. Yeah, you uh, know, if uh, all right, Andy, go ahead, Kev, go ahead. All right, all right, Andy. President Hinks is coming back at you again. Transportation czar, because I like the fact that you had an answer on how to solve this problem. But here's my question for you in a continuation. I like the fact that no drivers are there, so you don't have to pay all the 401k and the health care and all the expenses involved with that. You take the independent contractor out of the scenario. Who buys the car? Who pays for the car? Because one thing about those independent contractors, they brought their own cars and, 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 and uh, yeah. put their own gas in their, in their car and they insured them. Who buys and insures and services that car? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a really good question. I think that what's going to happen is like the whole automobile industry is going to really change. You know, we saw, I think, um, sure. was it Hertz that put in an order for 100,000 Teslas? Um, yes. I think it was Hertz. I can't remember. It's one of the rental car companies. Yeah, it was. It of, was. That you kind of had written off as dead, and now they're supposedly buying 100,000 Teslas. And you've even got mm -hmm. com companies like Tesla and other building out their own network. They're building out their own and navigation capability. So I could see a world where Tesla owns its own cars and partners with an Uber or partners with a Lyft for the sure. logistics factor of things, um, or Uber and Lyft simply buying a, a fleet themselves. But the idea right. being that, you know, we're probably five years away, maybe 10, from people really not needing to own a car at all and for networks of these uh, competing networks to be out there. There could be a Lyft network, an Uber network, a taxi network, a Tesla network. We don't know how this all turns out, but I think that you're right. There's an enormous shift coming up, and these companies got away with, you know, asking their drivers to buy the car, to service the car, to gas the car, and we're going to pay you the same as if you could go, you know, get a sandwich. They got away with that for a little while, but now it's kind of coming back, and um, the the driver is in the driver's seat again in terms of uh, in terms of ride sharing. Yeah, Andy, uh, the other day, ordered Chipotle 10 minutes from uh, an Uber driver and order an Uber the next day to go out to dinner, 17 minutes to get to my house. I'm in Chicago. There's Ubers and Lyfts everywhere, but that tells you the demand's still out there. Uh, but the drivers would rather go pick up uh, Chipotle for you uh, than have you sit in their car. And I get that point. But uh, I think this is all about the driver and getting back to work. And it's probably going to be extended a little bit longer than we think because people aren't coming back in droves yet. And we haven't seen that data. Uh, but thanks for uh, all the stuff on Lyft. We're going to uh, go ahead and trade it now. That's Andy Swan, the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, joining us, giving us great data once again.